Again, welcome to Database Management System course. In this lecture, we're going to discuss about relational database model. And our main objective is to describe the relational database model logical structure, also identify the relational model's basic components, and explain the structure, the contents, and characteristics of a relational table. Also use relational database operators to manipulate relational table contents. And also we're going to explain the purpose and the components of a data dictionary in the system catalog. So again, we start with the logical view of data. Here we say that a relational database model enables the logical representation of data and its relationships. So again, relational database model make it possible for logical representation of a data and its relationship. So a model will be, again, a representation. It can be a graphical representation or a mathematical equation representation of, a, of an entity or of a, a component. Uh, so here we say that logical simplicity gets simple and also effective database design methodologies. And as we discussed last, uh, our last lectures, entity relationship diagram is also a model, a database model. Uh, it helps us, again, when we are going to develop a database system, if we can model it first, it helps us to be able to design a very effective or efficient database system. And when we say an efficient database system, we mean a database system that is more faster to retrieve data. And the data also is organized based on a specific categories or criteria. And this also make it possible for us to write a query that will again, works very run very quick, faster to assess data very faster. So a relational database model again, enables the logical representation of data and its relationship. The logical simplicity again is the simple and also effective database design methodologies. Also, the logical view is to facilitate by the creation of data relationship based on the logical construct called a relation. So again, in a relation, again, even the term relation means a table. So a relational database system the backbone of a relational database system is the table. And normally data is organized in the rows and columns as a table. We are, as we mentioned earlier in our previous lectures, there are different types of database system. We can have an object-based, relational uh, base. And so again, it depends. But here, a relation means a table. So here we say the characteristics of a relational table can be, a table is perceived as a two-dimension structure because it consists of rows and columns. Also, each row of a table is like one record or a representation of a, a single entity occurrence within entity set. An entity set can be, let's say we have a student. So entity set can be all the students and we have a, we called, we are going to store the student data in a table called student table. So the entity set will be all the students. Now one row of a record will be a record of the student. So if I have 200 students in a student table, then I may have 200 rows. So one single entity or the one represent one row so we say each table, that is the row or a tuple, a tuple means a record, represents a single entity occurrence within entity set. So I have 100 students, that's entity set. One student, one row is a tuple, a record. So each table column also represents an attribute. I will even use the term, the characteristics. So for example, a student, last name will represent one column, address will represent another column. So it depends on how many attributes the students have. 
or the characteristics of the student. So a column actually will be the most scalar unit, the most simplest unit of a database system. So the simplest data we can store or the smallest unit is a, a record, I mean, a field, which is the column. Then two or more fields together can make a record. Or the record will make an entity or a table or entity set. Actually, a good term to use is entity set. So we can see how hierarchy from the lowest to the highest. And also the, in each intersection of a row and a column represents a single data value. Sometimes we use the term a cell. So intersection of the last, uh, last name column and the fifth row will give me the name, last name of the fifth record in the system. And also all values in a column must conform to the same data format. So if I have a column last field, the data type is test, all the 250 students, last name 250, must have the same data type. Also, each column has a specific range of values known as attribute domain. And this means, again, each column or each attribute may have a, a data type. Let's say if the data type is int, we know the values, the range of the values that we can put in. If it's character, maybe from lowercase a to uppercase z, and uh, I mean lowercase a to lowercase z, and uppercase a to uppercase z. So again, that will be the domain. The order of the rows and columns is immaterial. It doesn't matter to the database management system. And also each table must have an attribute very important, every table must have a column. And also a combination of attributes that uniquely identify each record. This is where we're going to bring the concept of a key. Example would be the primary key field. Now we have an Amazon. Amazon have over millions of customers. Now in the customer's database system, we don't want to enter the same customer name twice. So we may have a special ID. I quite remember, remember in the early 2000s, when you're a student, they will use your social security as a, your primary key field. The reason why, because social security number is a unique number for each person. The primary key field will make it possible for rest not to enter the same record twice. So if Amazon have over a million customers and they don't have no primary key field in their table, what will happen, one customer can be entered into the system maybe a thousand times. This will cause two problems. One is the time it takes to enter the data. And secondly, the memory, the storage. So it will waste the computer memory. So every table, every relational database system, the table must have a, a unique field. A unique field, again, we call the primary key field. So here we say each table must have an attribute or combination of attributes that uniquely define, identify each row. Now, sometimes we may say, okay, using only a number is not enough. Or using, let's say, employee ID is not enough because sometimes we may have an old employee that was employed. And after the number is finished, we start all over again. So after 10, 20 years, we can use the same number that we used previous years ago. So because of that, we may have a, a composite key, a combination of maybe two or more uh, attributes that will stand as a primary key field. So in this way, we can say, okay, employee ID and the zip code or employee ID the zip code and the last name together will be the primary key field. So that will take us to the next topic, which is keys. Again, keys consists of one or more attributes that determine other attributes. So what this means is that, again, we come back to the student. We have a student ID. If we decided, okay, student ID is not enough because after 10 years, we have to use the same numbers all over again. 
So we can say student ID with the year that the student was admitted. We know that there's no way that two students may have the same ID and they will be admitted the same year, no. Normally it take five years or let's say, let's say roughly five years, 10 years to use the ID all over again. So in this case, our primary key field will uniquely identify each record, either only the student ID or the student ID with a year of admission. And also this will ensure that we, don't, we do not enter the same student more than once so that we can save time of using to enter it and also the computer resources like memory storage. Also, one thing we need to establish a relationship among the tables to ensure the integrity of the data. And so when it comes to relationship, we are trying to say that if we have two or more tables, if, we ha if I have only one table in the database system, I don't need a relationship because it's only one. But if we have two or more tables, we can create a relationship. And, that, and this is one of the advantage of relational database system. Because by creating a relationship, it will make it possible to reduce redundancy. Now, let's say I have a fit for course, courses that students can take, and I have a fit for students who well, have the student information. Now, in the course table, I don't want to have the student last name, address, city, state, and the course name, course ID, course, etc. I don't want to. The reason why, because in the student table, I already have the student ID, name, address, city, etc. So all I need is only one unique field. Address, I won't use address because two students can have the same address, especially if they are siblings. But the ID, even if they are twins, they have to use different student ID. So what will happen is, instead of using, coming to the course table, to identify the students that is taking the course. So I may have his last name, first name, address in the course table. I will only take the primary key field, which is the student ID, because I know if I use the student ID, two students cannot have the same ID. Or if it's composite, then I'll use student ID in the year of admission. So this reduce uh, what we call the data, data redundancy because I don't want to have last name, first name in a student table, then I have last name and first name in a course table again. So that's the main goal of a case. The primary key field is attribute or a combination of attribute that uniquely identifies a row. A row is identified a record uniquely. Also, we have what we call the dependency. And also one thing the primary key field is that when I know the employee ID, then I know the rest of the attribute, last name, first name, etc. So primary key field can determine other attributes. So next we go to dependencies. We may go details on this when we start the database normalization. We have like four or five different normalization stage. The point of doing normalization to normalize your database system, again, is to reduce redundancy. So we have at least two popular dependency. One is a most common one is the transitive dependency. In the third normal form, we try to remove it. So again, when we start normalization, we may go detail. But the reason why I mention it is the same concept here, dependencies. Dependencies, the whole concept is that we have some field that we depend on other fields. For example, I know student ID would depend, uh, uh, employ, student last name would depend on the ID because ID is unique field. So if I know the student ID, then I may know it's uh, last name. So dependency here, we, first we start with determination. Here we need to state in which knowing the value of one attribute makes it possible to determine the value of another. So primary key field is perfect for that. If I know the primary field of one employee. I may know the employee last name, address. Actually, I will know the rest of the attributes of an employee because what? Uh, and two employees cannot have the same employee ID. So it's a unique field. 
Now, the functional dependency is what we always take when we are in the second normal form. So here we say value of one or more attributes. Determine the value of one or more other attributes. What functional dependencies does it have? We always want the primary key field to determine other attributes, but not other attributes determine other attributes without the primary key field. And that's the concept of functional dependency. So when we go to normalize our table, at least to be in the third normal form, we need to remove the functional dependency. Then in the third normal form, we need to remove what we call the transitive dependencies. So what is a functional dependency? We say it's a value of one or more attributes that determine the value of one or more other attributes. See here, we didn't say the primary key field determine or any key field determine other attributes, no. So the determinant will be attributes whose value determines another. Attributes whose value determines another. Then dependent will be attributes whose value is determined by the other attribute. So a full functional dependency will be the entire collection of attributes in the determinant is necessary for the relationships. So we have different types of keys. We mentioned primary key, primary key, but we also have uh, candidate key, foreign key, secondary key, etc. So let's go through some of the keys here. We start with the composite key. Actually, the key word here is composite. So composite means more than one. So here we say a key that composed of more than one attribute. So a composite key will have more than one attribute. Then we have the key attribute. A key attribute is attribute that is part of a key. Actually, that's why it's called key attribute. It's an attribute, but it's a part of a key. Since we have different types of a key, we cannot determine which one. But here we talk about in general. Now, the next is super key. A super key is a key that can uniquely identify any row in the table. Any row in the table. So a super key is almost like primary key field. Then candidate key will minimal, minimal super key. So we saw the candidate, uh, I mean the primary key field concept is more or less a super key. Candidate key also is a minimal super key. Then entity integrity is a condition which each row in a table has its own unique identity. So here we say all the all of the values in the primary key must be unique. We can't repeat it. And no key attribute in the primary key can contain a no. A primary key field always has to contain something, not a no. And also it must be empty, at least uh, as we said. Now no is very important. When we make a primary key field, we always make sure that the value there should be no. No is different from zero. Zero means the information, zero is an information, it's a data. So if I put zero in a field of uh, employee ID, it means the ID is zero. But if I put no, actually we don't even put no. If it's no, it means there's nothing. So that's what we have to understand. So no means the absence of any data value. Zero is not an absence of any other value. Zero is a value zero. Then unknown attribute value, but mm, no, but missing attribute value or inapplicable condition. We also have the referential integrity. So every reference to an entity instance by another entity instance is valid. And the foreign key is a primary key of one table that has to be placed into another table to create a common attribute. So we use the foreign key to have a relationship between two attributes. So normally a foreign key will be a primary key in another field or in another table, so in another table. So this is an example of a simple relational database. 
we saw that they have a product name. That's the name of the table, the product code, and the vendor code. So product code is the primary key field in a product table. And vendor code is a foreign key, again, in the product table. Then we have our second table, which will be the vendor table. The primary key field is the first column, which is the vendor code. And then the foreign key is known. So we can see our link. We are linking our foreign key vendor code to the vendor code, which is a primary key field in another table. So we said super key is an attribute or combination of attributes that uniquely identify each row in a table. And the candidate key will be the minimum irreducible super key. A super key that does not contain a subset of attributes. That is itself a super key. Now the primary key will be the candidate key selected to uniquely identify all other attribute values in a given row. Then the foreign key will be an attribute or combination of attributes in one table whose value must either match the primary key in another table or be known. Then the last, which is the secondary key, sometimes we interchange it. We use secondary key represent foreign key or foreign key to secondary key. But it's a slight different even from the definition here. So a secondary key is an attribute or combination of attributes used strictly for data retrieval process. But foreign key is an attribute or combination of attributes in one table whose value must either match the primary key in another table or before. So integrity rules is very important when you have a relationship between two or more uh, tables or relations. So relational database integrity rules are very important to good database design. So we said the relational database management system enforce the integrity rule automatically. It will much safer to make, uh, much safer to make sure the application design conform to entity and relational database system. So this is our integrity rule concept. So we have our integrity rule and description. In the requirement phase, we say that all primary key entries are unique and no part of the primary key may be known. Then the purpose to say each rule will have a unique identity and the foreign key values can properly reference key values. Now in an example, we say no invoice can have a duplicate number, nor can it be no. In short, all invoices are uniquely identified by their invoice number. Also in the requirement, we say a foreign key may have other no entry as well as it is not part of a stable primary key or an entity that entity that matches the primary key value in a table to which it is related. So the purpose here is we say that this, it is possible for an attribute not to have a corresponding value. So it is possible for an attribute not to have a corresponding value, but it will be impossible to have, to have an invalid entry, the enforcement of relational integrity value make it impossible to again delete a rule in one table whose primary key again has mandatory foreign key values. So we have some 
few examples here. We have a table named customer. The customer table, the primary key field is cost code. And the foreign key is agent code, which we have a table named agent, so agent code. Now we want to determine the name. So we come here yeah, at the bottom of the table, we can see the agent code, which is three values. And also the agent error code. So ways to handle nodes, again, no means there's nothing in the field. Ways to handle it first with flag. So special code used to indicate the absence of some value. And then we do the constraints. Constraints is more or less like a limitation of something, limitation. So not no constraint, place on a column to ensure that every row in the table has a value for that column. And also, unique means constraint, restriction place on a column to ensure that no duplicate values exist for that column. So theoretical way of manipulating table con content using relation operators. Here we use the river, which is a variable that holds a relation, then heading towards the name of the attribute. Then we have the body containing the a relation. The relation operators have a property of closure. So closure is the use of relational algebra operators on existing relation produces again new relations. So the relational set operators, we have select, project, union, intercept. And again, we may go through this one example at a time. So we start with the select. Select means I have some condition. And when the items met the condition, then I'm going to again select it or get so for example, here we have original table, then we have a new table. And we say select all yields. So selecting all yields will give us the same table. Now select only price less than two dollars. So I come to price looking for less than two dollars. It's only Four and five. Then project. So this is our original table again. If we want to project the price, it means we get only the price. We want to project P description and price yield. So we can see P description and the price. Then we want to project P code and price yield. So this example of union, union means it's a bilateral or it had it need two operands. So we have our first table, second table. We want to find the union of A and B. And this is the answer, which means everything in A and also everything in B, but no duplicate. So union means again, select everything in A, everything in B, no duplicate. Intercept means select only record that is a common in both field. In this case, we have the intercept. Then we have another two tables here, student table and let's say employee table. So intercept means what occurs in A, must occur in B. Here we say Franklin Johnson. Yes, because Franklin Johnson Johnson also is in uh, is in the first table, and it's in the second result also. We also have the difference relational set operators difference. 
Difference will yield all the records in one table that are not found in the other table. Table must be union compatible to yield valid results. Then we have product. Product will yield all the possible pair of rows from the two tables. So here the difference we can see the first table, second table. And then the final we can see that we have George James, Jane Smith, Peter Robertson, and Martin Lopez. Then the product, so how do we get this big uh, output when we have a very small tool input? First is product, second is the gates. So what we're trying to do is that we take, we look at the unique number here in the product table, the unique number will be P code. So I'll take the first P code and I'll use it to pair the three items here. So you can see here, one, three, four, five, six is three now. Instead of one is three because we have three inputs. So again, rational set operators joins allow information to be intelligently combined two or more tables. So joins again, that is the concept of a join. In a join, the core concept is if we, we must have at least two tables, two tables to have a connection between the two join. So natural join will link tables by selecting only the rows with the common values in their common attribute. Then equijoint will link table on the basis of equality condition. That's equijoint or equality join. Then theta join links tables using an inequality comparison operators. Then we also have the inner join only returns much records from the table that are being join. Outer join means much pairs are retained and or match values in the other table by left node. So we have the left outer join which we get all the records in the first table including those that do not have this matching. Then we have the right outer join which we get all of the rows in the second table including those that do not match the values in the first table. Then we have divide, divide means here use one double column table as DVD and one single column table as the advisor. So the output is a single column that contains all the values from the second column of the DVD that are associated with every row in the divisor. So to join two tables that will be used in join illustration, we have customer, we have agent. And also we have divide. And then data dictionary and system catalog. We say data dictionary is a description of all tables in a database created by the user and designer. Then the system catalog will be a system data dictionary that describes all objects within the database. Then homonyms and synonyms must be avoided. And again, this will be the conclusion of our lectures again on relational model.